Hey guys, I don't have a whole lot of time today, so I figured I'd answer a few questions that need more pictures than video of me rambling. So we're going to cover a few different, lesser-known laser tag systems. And by lesser-known, I mean that these aren't on toy store shelves, and take a little bit of research to find out about. Some of these systems I've had direct exposure to, and some of them I can only go off reviews of what others have said and my own observations. Let's start things off with a few questions from YouTube and the blog. James wants to know uh, about my experience with and predicted future of homebrew uh, laser tag, Arduino, Miles Tag, etc. Homebrew laser tag systems are excellent pl platforms for those who uh, want to dig into the hobby side of laser tag. Building your own blaster is not an easy task, but I've been doing recasings for a while. It's essentially the same concept. Let's say you go to the Miles Tag store online and purchase a UMT microboard. They supply you with the board, and you get to solder all the components and connections for the buttons inside whatever shell you can find. Some folks will even go as far as to building their own shells to replicate other modern weapons out of wood, aluminum, and other materials. While Miles Tag spe is specifically designed for laser tag, the Arduino is a development board that you can program to function like a laser tag board. The major difference between Arduino and other homebrew systems like FragTag and MilesTag is that you have to have programming experience to set up the Arduino to act like a laser tag board. FragTag and MilesTag are already set up to function as such. While it's more complicated to learn how to program the Arduino, in the end it means that you have complete control over what you're making. The reason why my group is focusing on developing the Arduino-run laser tag boards is the ability to have settings to function with other laser tag systems. Each system has their own unique signals that they send to one, one another. For example, Miles Tag can't work with Laser Challenge, Frag Tag can't work with the Phoenix LTX, and so on. But with the Arduino, as long as we know e how each system functions and the signals that they send to one another, we can program the board to use those signals so it's compatible with them. When it comes to direct experience, I've actually used Miles Tag based systems before. There was a guy who lived in town who ran his own mobile laser tag business who had gear from a company called Adventure Sports. These are metal blasters with simple functions and head-mounted 360-degree coverage sensors. It was very milsim, and you could, get, you could set all kinds of parameters on these. Sound effects, rate of fire, range, team settings, even recording damage levels and, and partial damage. The gear was very well built and rugged, and it took quite a beating over the years that he ran his business here in town. On a few occasions, we even managed to go up to the base to play with these awesome outdoor games. Unfortunately, getting into homebrew systems or Miles Tag systems can be much more expensive than just going to Toys R Us and picking up an, a set of overpriced LTXs. A board alone for building one of these systems is usually as expensive as a single store-bought blaster, roughly 40 bucks. They get more expensive if you want a system that has more features. And that's just the motherboard. You still have to figure in the construction costs of building the shell for it, the power supply, and other hardware you might want to use on it. As far as the future of these systems go, I think anything that's rooted in the hobby side of things is likely going to stay there. In the same way that there aren't as many Nerf fans who would go out and build a pump snap, there aren't as many laser tag fans who would go out there and build their own blaster using these systems. And since there's fewer laser tag fans, at least here in the US, than there are Nerf fans, the number of laser tag hobby enthusiasts is even lower. I suppose it can only grow from there, but I don't predict too much growth for the future of homebrew laser tag. John Mark asked, I'm pretty sure you have, but I'm curious as to your opinion of Battlefield, or Battlefield Live, that is. I've not had direct experience with Battlefield Live, but I have seen their equipment and other media from them. It's a neat system, and it looks like it's done well, but it's still a business. You don't own any of these blasters from them, so I suppose for someone who doesn't want to build their own blaster, but wants the experience of military simulation level laser tag, Battlefield Live is pretty much one of the best ways you can go. They have multiple sites around the world, but none of them are near me, so the only reason I haven't had personal experience with them isn't out of disinterest, but the unfortunate luck of not being located near any of them. Germ781 asked, Have you ever tried Halo laser tag blasters? And if so, are they any good? Man, I remember when, when these, got, uh, these got announced. We were all excited when our group heard about Halo Laser Tag back in 2007. For those who don't know, to promote Halo 3 in 2007, Jasmine Toys was employed to make replica Halo blasters and laser tag guns. 
While I don't have any of these personally, they were very expensive and hard to find at the time. The other problem was that they aren't directly compatible with any other systems. For the price they were asking for an incompatible system, it wasn't worth the investment for me. The shells are spot on replicas though, and the sound effects and features really bring you into the game. I mean, they had, uh, they, they, when the blast would overheat, the uh, coolant things would pop out the size, and you could click those back in the spot. Um, but ha the, uh, the, the fact that they can only be used with other laser, t laser tag systems that were designed by them, aka Halo laser tag systems, really shot it in the foot. A compatibility mode, at the very least, would have been a good option. The other problem I personally had with the system is that it was all Covenant Blasters. Admittedly, the only weapons in Halo that are laser-like are Covenant weapons, unless we're talking about the Spartan laser, of course. But I would have much preferred a Magnum or a Battle Rifle to a Plasma Pistol or Plasma Rifle. It's, uh, it's just the human in me, you know? <laughs> well, that's all I've got for today. Again, I'll keep answering questions this week for laser tag, so submit them as comments on YouTube and my blog, and I'll do my best to get to them all. For those wondering, yes, I am getting to the recasing questions. I just need more time to get that video ready. Thanks for watching!